I'm Joe Gennetti. I'm a friend of Sydney's since 1966 or 67. Long, long time ago. Long time ago. Um, anyway, um, I've known Sydney since then, and he used to come and visit. Uh, he came out first for a to with this photography um, expo, and he would do a lecture about printing and how he uh, and his approach. And he didn't talk much about his photography, but even then, you could see a lot of his photography was extremely stunning. I mean, it was it was more stunning than most of the people he printed for. Do you know what I mean? His own work. But he never, he doesn't promote his own work. He, you, you just see it and you know and you, by looking at it. Anyway, he, he, he's been a, a friend all that time. And he, sometimes he would come out maybe two or three times in a five year period and then sometimes he'd come out every year. But then it was just, and then he became friends with Howard. There's a, several other people that he knows and then he just, so when he would come out, uh, at, in the beginning, he used to stay at my place when I lived in Mound, and then uh, all these people would invite him. You know, he'd stay at one person's house after another person's house. But the photography is probably the most important thing. I, I know he's a great printer. The only story I could tell you about as this printer was that I started out and I wasn't getting anything, and I, somebody said, you've got to go see him. And I did. He worked at Campo Photo. And uh, he took my negatives and made big prints. And immediately I began to get work as a photographer, a commercial photographer, or magazine work and stuff. And he was, uh, I would see what he did with what I shot. And it was, it was like going to school. Because I, I didn't go to school for photography. But it, Watching what he did and what he emphasized in the print was like watching, you know, un learning that how to move the image around. My my major was fine arts, so uh, and at that time, very few there were not a lot of fine arts photographers. There were a lot of commercial photographers, but he was influential to a lot of people. I think sometimes some people's negatives were really pretty bad, and he save them. But his own photography is really more, uh, uh, very magical because it captures a, I don't want to talk about him, so I, want, I like to talk about his photography rather than, than his printing skill. I mean, he's printed for, what is it? he's printed for uh, uh, Eugene Smith, uh, he's printed for Cartier Bresson, one day, it was, Eugene Smith said, the only photographer, the only printer I can trust is Sid Kaplan. I mean, he, I think he just about went, he, not, he couldn't believe that. It was like the height of his career. Uh, uh, he's a, it was extraordinary for him. He really was overwhelmed by it. And I remember that because I went in and he was like st stunned. Somebody like hit him with a two by four. And he just was, that was the greatest compliment anybody could give him. You know, he'd been printing for Cartier Bresson, he'd been printed uh, lots of people, great people. Robert Frank, you know, Luigi, you know, they, they used to go hang out together. But his work, I really, that's really, if you look at the breadth of his work, and I have looked at a lot of his work, including his color, it is, um, it is, it is, um, it captures the, the, the gestalt or the feeling of that moment. It isn't, uh, it isn't, um, what would you call it? it? It's extraordinary because when you look at it, 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 it's not like it's a picture of this. The picture, his pictures take you to that spot in your brain, your brain picture, 
this is different than people taking pictures of things. It takes you back to the time, and it's that's what's extraordinary about his work. It's just, it's brilliant. Um, I, and sometimes you ask him about it or talk to him about it, and he kind of looks at you. I think he knows, but he's like, he's very modest about what he does. But every other person I know who knew him, there were several other people, they used to say the same thing, but they would very rarely say it to him because uh, Sidney would get uncomfortable. But he, uh, he was pretty influential in, 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 to, to a lot of people, as well as, well as myself. Yeah. He, un Sidney, understood before I did of what I was doing. And by printing it a certain way, he took the emphasis from the, to the, right here, you know, it was like, it was like watching Rembrandt paint, but he, he would take your negative and make, he would, he would teach you how to speak, but he didn't do this, uh, he didn't say to you, this is what you do. No, he would just do it and you'd see this print there and you'd see maybe that print there and of course you'd pick the better one because he printed it a certain way. I don't know if he remembers all of this, but that's what happened many times. I used to send people there and they would come back with, you know, their eyes would be wide open. It was like they had gone to Mecca and learned how, what you're supposed to be doing with the print. That's, uh, you know, uh, this may be, you know, this may sound like a great deal of praise about somebody I've known for 40 years, but you, in my, ob ob objectively speaking, I would say that this person has more influence if you look at the breadth of his work, he has more influence than a lot of other people. And people who know him will say that. I mean, they'll, I know him personally, and then I know him photographically, so I'm looking at both ends of this human. And he came from a very, very, very tough childhood. A really bad, tough, tough, tough time. And he, we've talked, well, he and I, would, when we meet, we don't talk about photography, we talk about life, about his life. And we, I knew his wife, I knew his children. He made a, uh, he made a conscious, we, I said, what, how did you get into this? And he said, well, the first time I saw a print come up in the developer, he said, it was magic to me. Well, that's what he ended up doing. Uh, uh, but... I think what happened is the first time he saw that, it was a clue or a road map to getting out of being um, being uh, somebody who went to work every day. You know, just went to work and did this because they couldn't be a real good, do what they were, the passion they wanted to do. He figured out how to take what had fascinated the hell out of him and passion and put the two things into one uh, one, um, uh, uh, one moment continuously with the, if you look at his Mummers series in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's, you have to see those because they're overwhelming. I mean, there's a bunch of guys pissing against the wall and turning around and smiling at him. You know, they were all drunk, but you know, I don't know if this helps, but what I'm trying to get at is that he, we have talked about these moments, these things that shift you from one uh, thing to being a brain surgeon, you know. How do you get from growing up in the Bronx, a very poor, you know, everybody telling you you're never going to do anything, become anybody, into, you know, Robert Frank saying you're the greatest printer in the world, you know, or becoming such a great photographer. You do it by, by looking at the situation and realize that the, your only hope is to get out of that and become remake yourself, complete, continuously remake yourself. And he continuously remakes himself. I, I, I probably would never talk to these things about him directly, but he, I've seen his work since 1958. It's a continuous work. And he's, I looked at his just stuff, what was it called? Uh, the one that the didn't show, drive-by shooting. And it, you know, I've seen a lot of people shoot pictures out of windows. But some of those were like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I've been there, I felt that. He captured what I felt. So, and that's, uh, 
it's he's very um, and the reason he's that the reason he's that good, I think, he avoids. Um, he doesn't talk about it, and he doesn't. He he thinks about what's interesting. It's, it's this is not a like it's not an intellectual exercise. It's a a soul exercise. It's like somebody who writes a poem. Uh, I'm trying to think of in the same Malay's poem. You know, I, I don't remember the word for word, but the candle burns, the candle burns at both ends. Uh, you know, and how bright the light is, and you know, he has a passion, and that's it. And that's Sydney. He has a passion for what he does, what he's taking a picture of, and uh, we're lucky to have experienced him. Uh, what you had was a bunch of people who grew up; they were first or second generation immigrants, and they were. They were aware of their of, of surroundings and everything, and they, they it was, and they wanted to get outside of it, and then but they had this new world that they saw, and it was not the world of their parents, and they grabbed hold of it, and they that they looked they saw all the people who didn't make it who were miserable, that they didn't do what they the passion that they wanted to do, and they realized that they had to change their life to make their passion. I mean, I know that's what I did, and sometimes when I talk to him, he'll almost admit that, you know, uh, he'll say it sometimes, that the passion is what pulled him outside of the gestalt of go to, you go to work, you marry a lady, you know, you have a house in New Jersey, you know, and be happy, okay? No, no, he, that's not what he has. I mean, I knew his wife, his wife was a sweet lady. He got, he got outside of that. He got, he got outside of the milieu that he was destined to grow up in. And that's how he became, uh, that's how he has such a stunning uh, images. You realize that this is one long brush stroke, one brush stroke of life. And uh, Sydney will be remembered two or three hundred years from now. Um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the joke inside my head. Tell the joke. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, uh, the, the joke inside my head has to do with, the, you know, where we put po false praise to other people. Where Here's this little Jewish kid, you know, who grew up in the Bronx, didn't have a lot of opportunities, and made really something for himself. Really something for himself. Took changed a lot of people's lives by what he did, by what he spoke about, about how he did it, and he learned how to survive. I mean, the teachers were at the new school in New York. That's an extraordinary thing. Most people you know, just go through life and die and that's it. You know, we, we don't remember Giuseppe Little, Giuseppe Scalatoni in the 15th or 14th century who was a you know, mixed the paints for so and so, but we will remember Sydney. We will look at those pictures and we'll go. Uh, it'll make you go back to those brain images, the, the 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 way your brain stores images. Now, this is my opinion. I don't know about anybody else, but uh, you know. But I looked at his work and it was like, shit! I wish I shot that. I wish I had that vision. You know. <laughs> And that's my criteria, something really great, is I wish I had done that. Because they captured what moved me each time. You have to really look at uh, some of the stuff he did. Uh, there's a shot that he, uh, it's, it's like, just like yesterday morning, three kids in high school jackets from the Bronx looking at the girls, ice, the, the privileged women, ice skating in Central Park. And they're talking to each other. And you, I've been there. I was there, you know, a little kid from Brooklyn. I, I know that feeling, you know. And some of them are realizing, well, I'll never get that rich. I'll never be into that uh, social strata. But, I mean, he captured it in one second. 
you have to see that pic. It's a great picture. I like that picture. Mm -hmm. But but anyway, there's a lots of lots of pictures. As he's and done. Sydney was like a sponge in a way. In but the sponge worked both ways. Uh, some people, you know, you meet people that they don't. They just they're they're there and you're here and it, it's a, you don't get this back and forth. Sydney, you get back and forth. You know, uh, you'll ask him about something. He very rarely commented on your photography, almost never commented on your photography. But if you gave him something to print, you understood what he was doing too. He was making it, he was kind of teaching you something. But he had this, there was this two worlds, this, this taking pictures and printing for other people and taking pictures and printing. It became so famous printing for other people that it freed him to do the photography and uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see if, I, I think a lot of people should have paid attention a long time ago about his work, because it, if you look at the breadth of it, you go, you know, God, I wish I could do that. I wish I, wish I could paint like that, or I, I wish I could capture the, the whole human experience the way he captured the whole human experience. And we're not talking to somebody who's like, uh, you know, oh, look at me, I'm uh, Ansel Adams, I'm uh, Brett Western, you know, whoever. No, you're talking about somebody who, you're lucky if you can get him out of the shadows. But I remember him as a human, as a nice, gentle soul. Um, and nice, gentle souls get get some of those rewards, you know, that, like uh, Vincent Van Gogh, you know that God says, "Okay, you're gonna if you believe in God." God says, "Okay, you're gonna have this talent," and he has that talent. There's the the breadth of his work is what should one should look at more than one particular photograph. And he keeps repeating, he keeps reinventing Sydney. It's like, oh God, I didn't know you could. That's just a surprise, Sydney. That's just I mean that's a. But sometimes I don't tell him that. I just. Sometimes I don't talk about him for months. You could ask my wife. <laughs> but anyway. There's only one way I could take all these accolades and make some cash out of it. Oh. <laughs>